we are now recording. Hi, I'm Jen Bonet with the Creative Coast, Executive Director of the Creative Coast and the Vice President of Innovation and Entrepreneurship for the Stana Economic Development Authority. And since uh, March, mid-March, the Creative Coast has gone online. We see a lot of new people on today. So we are hosting at least one webinar a week, different topic, always at lunchtime. So you can kind of tune in at lunch. Um, and it's all about marketing or entrepreneurship or technology. And every week is a little bit different. So you got to kind of follow us. We do, we have updated our newsletters to be weekly. So they come out every Monday. So you can kind of tee up what's what's coming for the next week and um we are we have not been doing a lot of happy hours we stopped because people kind of got bored of zoom happy hours but we're going to try a new happy hour technology on july 28th and all are welcome it's it's a technology called um icebreaker icebreaker.video and my friends over at the Atlanta Tech Village have been using it for all of their meetups and and love it so we are going to um give that a try and see if we can't get happy hours happening again. Since we miss getting together in person, we can try and at least get together virtually. Um, today, we have Marjorie Young with Carriage Trader PR, uh, who's gonna talk to us about uh, PR stuff. And, and I'm really excited to have her. Marjorie and I have known each other probably for close to 15 years, even though I was in Atlanta most of that time. Uh, and I was at, at Georgia Tech for the last uh, seven years while her daughter was going there. So uh, we've, we've, I've been a fan of this region even before I moved here. She knows my dad. Um, and so <laughs> we've been friends and in the same circle for a long time. And, and she's, uh, a, we're blessed to have her with us today. And we're blessed to have her here in Savannah. So I will turn it over. Thank you, Jen. And gosh, thank you all for taking time to um, sit in on this hour. It, we're going to be talking about three strategies of how to increase your word of mouth and in the community and online. Um, so my goal today is to uh, make this interactive. So if you can go ahead and so I can see you. And also the other goal is that you can walk away with three strategies that you can start to implement immediately. Um, so a little about me, I've been doing, I've been making people famous for 25 years. And I want to make you a local celebrity. This, these are strategies that are going to build your reputation and get people talking about you without buying advertising. There's a big difference, okay? And um, there's a whole bunch of strategies. We don't have time for it. Um, I actually have a book coming out called Reputation Matrix, and it's at the printers now. So I made it very affordable for everybody, every small business owner. Um, it's everything I've ever learned about how to increase your visibility, credibility, and positive word of mouth in the community and online. And we're, we're going to go over three really powerful ones today. Um, people don't, I don't think small business owners realize that there is a strategy for word of mouth. When you ask them, they are like, yeah, it just happens. Well, today's session, we're gonna talk about how to really move the needle to get mega word of mouth. And we're gonna do that through mass media. And I'm gonna just run you through a number of things. Um, this strategy is actually how I helped turn my dad's business around many years ago. And we were facing I hate to say the B word, but we were facing bankruptcy and we had zero money to do advertising, nothing. And we got a great article in the paper. It's the first press release I ever wrote after I got out of college <laughs> and they picked it up and it ended up on the front page of the Washington Times in the money section. And I would then take that article and make the sales calls and say, hey, the, the beauty of that, it wasn't saying, look how great I am. It was the media saying, look how great you are. So it's a, sh a different shift in, in thinking. We want to get people saying, look how great you are. Instead of like on social media, a lot of times people are like, look how great I am. Me, me, me. This is great. But we need to get the mass media and other people saying how great you are. So... 
Before we get started, I want to go around the room and everybody introduce themselves. I need your name, the name of your company, and quickly what you do. So I see Brad. You want to start? Uh, Brad, can you go first? Uh, my name is Brad Speck, and I am the Director of Operations for the front line of WorkSource Coastal. Uh, we work uh, with the WIOA program in getting youth and adults reemployed. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. Jessica. Sorry about that. Good morning. Um, thank morning. you for your thank you for your time today. Um, my name is Jessica Bernhardt, and I am the chief strategist and sales officer for Yankee Bell Shop, which is a word that I recently had trademarked. And um, now I'm in the process of um, going online for a shop. I moved to Hilton Head Island 15 years ago from New York City. And I've been in sales and development for 20 years. And people would always say to me, I can't believe you moved from New York City to the South. You know, what is that like? And, you know, one day in 2006, the word, um, well, I'm a Yankee Bell just came out of my mouth and people seemed to like it and I got it trademarked. Um, I was laid off in April, so here I go. <laughs> Good for you, Jessica, thank you. Jolia Bush. Joella. Joella, I'm sorry, Joella. Bush. Hi everyone, again, I'm Joella Bush coming um, to you from Detroit, Michigan. Woo! Yes, the big How did you hear about it? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, this was forwarded to me um, from our VP, uh, Brenda Motley Akins. And so she told me about the webinar and said, to, you know, hey, check it out and see if it's um, some information that I could um, use and find valuable and bring back to our company. So um, I work for Ross Innovative Employment Solutions. We are a workforce um, development agency and um, we currently have a contract with um, Detroit at Work. So we are a, a Detroit at Work Career Center. And um, I am the Career and Community Outreach Coordinator. So um, awesome. I service uh, adults that have open cases with um, Department of Health and Human Services. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Oh gosh. I can't, I don't have a name there. I do have a name, Melody Waters. Hey, Melody. Oh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Melody, we can't hear you. Okay, now I had to unmute myself. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Melody Waters. This is my daughter, Mackenzie. We are hey, the owners of we are the owners of Tide in Country um, here in Sandfly, Georgia. Um, and we are a candle and soap company. We are also a um, Rustic Coastal um, Outdoor Lifestyle Brand um, here okay. in Savannah. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, Tamika Jones. Hello, I'm Tamika Jonas. Um, I'm the Prevention Education Coordinator for the Rape Crisis Center of the Coastal Empire, where we provide resources and advocacy for victims of sexual assault, but also prevention education to the community. Thank you very much. Is that John Mulherin from my high school? Yes, it is. How are oh, you? I haven't seen you in way too many years. Oh my gosh. I know. It's been a long time. And then when I had to put the camera on to, to show my, my unshaved bald head, I said, oh, oh my God. Uh, oh, well, here we go. <laughs> so John, what do, what do you do? Um, I have an insurance agency called uh, Benequity Partners. And I'm in Clinton, Maryland, near the uh, MGM National Harbor. So um, I have my Series 7 and Series 66 securities license, but I'm backing off of that. And I just want to really do the, the insurance and, and the investments without the, uh, the broker-dealer part because um, I'm kind of um, queuing into a um, philosophy that it's, it's not really necessary to lose 30% of your portfolio every time the market dumps and there's some other, yeah, there's some other alternatives to that. So. Well, thank you, John. It's really good. You need to join the Wooten high school chat on Friday night and I'll see you there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I think I've been voluntold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Lisa Carr, great. Can you un can you join us? Or all right, Victoria Baylor. Hey there. Hey, hi everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Victoria Baylor and I'm a mindset and brand brilliance coach. I work with uh, high functioning entrepreneur women, helping them to remove mental blocks to their success, uh, release untapped potential and to monetize their brilliance. So it's a pleasure to be on the call with everyone. I'm in Savannah, Georgia currently where it's probably like 120 degrees right now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Victoria, I just sat in on one of her webinars and if you're looking for speakers, she's a great speaker. Oh, it was oh, yeah. Dawn's Daughters. Yeah, it was awesome. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for doing much. that. Thank you. You know I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> Casey. Casey, there you Hi. go. Hi, I'm Casey. Um, I work over at St. Andrews School in Wilmington Island. Um, I do admissions work there. And we're a pre-K to grade 12 independent school. Tell Scott Searcy I said hi. I think he might be on here also as I scroll through. Okay, good, good. Is yeah. Rose, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Casey. Uh, Joyce Wallace. She, okay. Or Jeannie Silver. Yes. Oh, Joyce, I'm good. Marjorie. Thank I'm you, Marjorie. Jeannie. Yeah, hey. Joyce Wallace. How you doing? Good, good to see you. Good, I am uh, retired, recently retired from the DuPont company up in Wilmington, Delaware, and I'm a volunteer here with SCORE, uh, South Carolina Low Country. So I'm a mentor and you, we work very closely with Marjorie and I just wanted to join in on this webinar. Thank Always you. looking to improve marketing and um, social media and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for joining. Awesome. So we, we see Frank Labari. Well, yeah, let me, let me get my camera on because hey. I'm, on, I'm on multiple Zooms, believe it or not. I have I two going it. here. Um, my name is Frank LaPerry. I'm a uh, SCORE mentor on the executive committee for four years. I did Boys and Girls Club for 10 years. I ran every committee there. Uh, my background is uh, a senior executive in consumer products, had my own consulting business. I've been helping uh, either young entrepreneurs for the last four years or young kids, uh, mentoring them in the Boys and Girls Club since I've lived on Hilton Head. And now I've uh, come to meet uh, Marjorie and actually did one of her uh, videos uh, a couple of weeks ago with one of my clients. Thank you for coming on, Frank. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jeannie Seaver, can you join us? Yep, yep. Can we see you, Jeannie? Jeannie, Jeannie. We can't hear. Jeannie, we're going to come back to you. Um, Maya Mance, oh wait, Jeannie, you got, no? Maya Mance, um, her, she has her audio off, but she wanted to make sure she was included in the introduction. She's with G100. She also has her own podcast show. And um, so Maya, we're, Mia, sorry, Mia, we're, we're including you in here. So uh, let's see, did I do Joyce Wallace? Joyce? Yes, you did. I did, okay, sorry, I did. Done. Susie Chisholm. There. Okay. I'm Susie Chisholm and I am an artist. I'm a sculptor. Nice. And I do bronze sculpture anywhere from maquette size to life and a quarter. Awesome. Play. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining, Susie. All right. Next one is, oh, it's Tanya Milton. Hey there. Tanya, can you hear us? Tanya, Tanya. Okay, Erlene Jones, can you hear us? Can you introduce yourself? I am uh, Erlene Jones. I'm the uh, program director for the Out of School Youth Program um, for Ross, and I'm in Richmond, Virginia. And I can relate to 100 degrees and high humidity all night and early morning. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining. I just love how, how many people from outside of Savannah Mm -hmm. It is a great place to live and it's a great place to do business. So yeah, uh, uh, Jen can hook you up if you want to move down here. <laughs> uh, okay. John O'Toole, there's my friend from Hilton Head. John, can you, can you join us? Hey there. Good morning. I'm, I was actually literally eating my lunch. Um, John O'Toole, I'm with Warren Financial. 
Uh, we are a registered investment advisor. We are located in Hilton Head, obviously, uh, Atlanta and uh, Philadelphia. And basically we um, uh, manage money and do wealth planning for high net worth individuals. And um, our business is very contingent on word of mouth. So this is a great forum for me. Awesome. And you also have a, a gym, right? Um, I also am a owner in the, the Reebok CrossFit on Hilton Head Island. So um, we are, word of mouth always Absolutely. access our business there. And um, Frank, I'm also on the board of the Boys and Girls Club of Hilton Head. I don't oh, know. Really? We never yes. met. I must have left before you came aboard. Uh, yeah, that's actually, I've been there for a while. <laughs> I've been uh, out of there for five years. I love Probably these just the time I came on. Yeah. But anyway, I'll, I'll turn it back to Marjorie. Thank you. Tanya, did you, are you on now? I think I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. So I'm Tanya Milton. I'm with the Savannah Tribune. And for all of word of mouth, um, mine is from paper to ink and then to the people, to the readers. I've got over 45,000 readers. So word of mouth works. <laughs> and so does print. Absolutely. And it all goes online. Thank you, Tanya, for joining. Good morning, Elizabeth. Well, good afternoon at this point. Hi, I just came in from another meeting. So um, I'm a, a professor at Georgia Southern um, mm -hmm. on the Statesboro campus. And one of the things that I work with my students on uh, um, in their organizations is, is their professional development. So I attend a lot of these so that I can pass all the goodies on. Good. Well, thank you for joining us. And um, let's see, Jeannie Seaver, I don't, I don't know. She wasn't able to get on. Um, Maya, Cecilia Johnson. Or Catherine Betos. Or Scott Searcy? Anybody? Uh, Marjorie, we have a couple that have introduced themselves in the chat. Sherry okay. Trice is with Greenbrier Children's Center. Her audio is not working well. Okay. Person, but she can hear. Scott okay. Searcy also introduced himself. Uh, doesn't actually say what he does here. And then Catherine Betos is on desktop. Um, she's with Infinity, I think. So she's- Okay, very she's good. Up telecom work here in Savannah. How about uh, Nicole Hagen or Chad Warner? Hey, Hi, Nicole. Guys. Hi, I am Nicole Hagen. I am a project director in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I also work for Ross Innovative Employment Solutions and we run a TANF program here. Thank you for joining us all the way from there. Milwaukee, <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, we also have Nikel Taylor, can you join us? Or Brian Yacht? Yeah. Oh, Nikel, hey there. Hi, um, my name is Nikel Taylor. I'm actually not, I'm a full time student. Um, our, my professor from Savannah State University gave us the information about your webinar and just told us to come and check it out because the classes for communicating in business environments. So I'm just here to see the different tips you have and things like that. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Let's Thanks. see. Brian. Hey, Brian. Hey, everybody. Hey, how are you? I am great. I'm Brian Yance with Official Guides of Savannah. And we do brochure distribution and management for the hospitality industry or any business that wants to drive more visitors into their business, retail, restaurant, shop, whatever. Thank you for joining. How about Bob? McLeod? McLeod. Hey, hey, Marjorie. How are you? I'm good. I met you about a dozen years ago at a SCORE event in Atlanta. And oh, uh, the gosh. first thing I told you was you're too young to be a SCORE advisor, and you're still too young to be a SCORE advisor. So. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife and daughter and I have a consulting and speaking uh, company. Uh, it's, uh, our consulting is around my wife's uh, series of books. Uh, 
She has a second edition coming out in a couple of months. And so I'm looking to get some tips on marketing and word of mouth and good. So, Cause the speaking okay. business is not too good these days, you know, I'm doing a lot of online on speaking like this. I mean, yeah, we're is. doing more and more, but people don't want to pay as much when, you know, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, <laughs> I'm in Lake Oconee, Georgia. Oh, I'm jealous. Thank you. Bob. <laughs> okay. Let's see who else do have we not, um, We've got a Chad Warner with Blue Lime Studio and uh, Cecilia Johnson from the SBAC is also online and um, Jean Sieber said she's having some trouble with her mic but she works in private equity around uh, aviation companies. Community, she's a community activist and child advocate and a member of the Exchange Club. Awesome. Okay, thank you for that introduction. Napuna with iVolunteer International. Hey, no Hi, Marjorie. <laughs> How's it going? I'm sorry. Uh, I've been running around, so I'll uh, request to keep my video off. But uh, yeah, I'm the founder and executive director of iVolunteer International. We are a startup tech nonprofit uh, based uh, right here in Savannah. So we use technology to empower people uh, to create and connect to social impactful projects in their local communities and around the world. And uh, our vision is creating 7 billion volunteers, and we've started counting since 2017. So Glad to be here to learn about uh, marketing tips from the marketing guru. <laughs> Thank you, Napuna. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Sherry Trice. Or Derek Goldfarb. Or Melissa. It's hard to tell who I've gotten. Uh, if anybody would like that hasn't introduced themselves, could introduce themselves. Um, you got it? Everybody good? Okay. All right. Uh, oh, there is, hold on. There's another, is that Philip? Yep. Philip, undo it and introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Philip Scroggin. I am the owner and managing director for Soul Insights. We are a local research company, and we connect businesses with their customers and their target market to help them get strategic insights to help businesses be wiser and to delight their customers. So I appreciate you letting me introduce myself real quick before we get started. Thanks, Marjorie. Absolutely. And this is really important what we just did. Um, we're going to come back to it. There's a reason why I took 20 minutes to do this, but we're going to come back to what, what just happened. Um, so Entrepreneur Magazine defines buzz as unformed, <sighs> uh, unpaid promotion. All right, got the difference between it's unpaid. It is so crucial to get um, buzz that is not paid because that's where the credibility comes in. That's where you build your reputation. When we get people talking about how great you are, but how do you do that? How do you do that? Mass media is the secret. Um, so what's the first thing that you do if somebody says, hmm, I want to take a, uh, I want to do coaching with Victoria. What, what are they going to do? You know, pick up the phone, they're going to email, and they're going to Google. And then they're going to look at that Google search and say, hmm, wow. She's done a lot of cool things. You know, she, she's done this, she's done that. It's not just all social media stuff. Like if you Google Jen Bonet, you're gonna see that she's been on MSNBC. That's where the credibility starts building. And you start, you go, oh, if the media is talking about them, it, there must, there, there's, there's a lot of credibility and it's not, that is, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to get into the media. And Tanya might be able to answer some questions about that too. But if you can get in as an article or on the six o'clock news, you are gonna be seeing so many, so many people are gonna be learning about you. Um, and, uh, it's very different. Advertising is something that's guaranteed that's gonna be in the paper. PR is something that you submit that, I'm gonna, that we're gonna talk about. Um, that ends up as an article, okay? The paper doesn't pay you to write it in. You pray that they, they pick it up, okay? Um, 
let me just show you the, the difference here. Hold on, I'm gonna do a screen share here, hopefully. So if you look at how many people, um, like if you, if you have, um, if you get into the Savannah Morning News, you're gonna get 75,000 people looking at your article. If you get, if, if Quality Rock, the radio station, puts, puts your information on there, you're gonna get 8,000 people looking at it. WSAV is 3,000 people. So what I'm telling you is like, let's go around the room or just tell me how many people are on your social media. Like Victoria, how many people are, follow you? Uh, total, maybe between four and 5,000. That's a really good amount. Well, not like, I mean, personal account included. <laughs> My separate business stuff is probably more about 2,000. But if you also got it into the mass media, you would have half a million people looking at what you're doing. And there's five different ways that you can get into the media. The algorithms show that they most likely cover hard news, right, Tanya? They cover an award you win. They cover, they might cover a speech and then we're gonna talk about this specific strategy, being the authority, having a column. Um, they might talk about your leadership. What are you doing in the community to help the community be better? Often the Savannah Tribune would cover that, especially if you're, you're making a difference with non with nonprofits. That's news. That is something they want to talk about. Um, and charity. What, you know, there might be an organization where you donate $500. So that the algorithms show those are the top five credibility markers that the media, the mass media will report about. And when I say mass media, I'm talking your local mass media. I've heard so many people like, well, nobody reads the paper anymore. They do. They might read it online, but they do. And I promise you, they have more people following them than you do on your, on your personal social media. So just imagine if you can get that link put on mass media and then you share it on yours, you are multiplying the amount of visibility that you're getting. But there's a real strategy to creating word of mouth. And, and these are the five markers that we're going to, that you, you do it with. Um, so actually what, what I want you to do right now um, is let's- Sorry, Could you repeat the five? I, I only got three. <laughs> Awards, authority, charity, hard news, hard news meaning new hires, um, um, your anniversary, like I'm celebrating 25 years this year, I'll put in a press release, the media should pick that up. Um, and, and leadership, are you on a chamber board? Are you on a nonprofit board? Okay. So once, once you, um, well, let me just show you right, right now too. This is what we call the reputation matrix. Wait a minute. And this is what, okay, so you've got authority, charity, awards, leadership, and news. And your goal in community PR is to have one a month in a community our size. So let's say this month is July and Victoria is gonna be speaking at um, Dawn's Daughter. She would, on her plan right here, would put that she's speaking here. And maybe next month she gives uh, an award to an, a charity, get, you know, a, a donation to Dawn's Daughters. Um, maybe in September, she wins the, the Chamber uh, um, Small Business of the Year. That's a press release. That'll end up in front of half a million people in a local community. Leadership, maybe Victoria becomes president of Dawn's Daughter. That, that probably wouldn't happen until December. 
And Victoria, how many, um, how many years have you been in business? Uh, about 14 as an image professional and three in my coaching business. Okay, so when is next year, 2021, your, your uh, 15th year? Yeah. So next year, you would be, um, you know, that would bring you a lot of media, of course, you know, compared to 5,000, half, half a million people seeing that you've been in business for, for that long. So what does that mean? When somebody reads that, that means, wow, she's been in business a long time. It, it's creating this very positive conversation in your head of that it, it is, it translates into that's a really good thing. All of these do. If, if you get written up in the paper about having an awards, you're an award-winning company. And then you're walking around town or they see somebody on Zoom and they're like, gosh, John O'Toole, I saw that you won this award. You know, that's a conversation that is creating the buzz. That's creating the word of mouth. These headlines that end up in mass media create this kind of buzz. So um, before I go on, on and, and start talking about authority and the other two, I want everybody to, um, I want you to Google your brand. I want you to Google either your name or the name of your company. And, and I'm going to either ask somebody or we're going to share if somebody wants to share what comes up. This is like a report card. This is your, your word of mouth digital, what people are saying about you online. So does anybody want to volunteer to, to share? Or I could actually tell me what to do. And, or Jen, if you could type in um, somebody's name. Like Melody Waters, can we use the name of your company? Tide in Town? Jen, can you type in Tide in Town and share? And, and so we can look at... Um, it's Tide in Country. Sure. I, I was looking at my own results. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Marjorie, Marjorie. I'll share. I'll share. <laughs> it's tied in, Marjorie, it's Tide in Country. Okay. Jen's going to share it with us. All right. So you, you see me. Let's look at Jen first. Look. Okay. <laughs> we actually give report cards on this. So we've got the creative coach. She's on Twitter. Well, it's LinkedIn that comes up first, actually, if you look. Yeah, then Twitter. I'm really big on, and then my own personal website. So that's kind of interesting, yeah. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's powerful. So, uh, so no, I'm, I'm logged in as Jen Bonet to Google, though, right? But it's okay. Um, do Tide in Town, is that right, Melody? Tide in Country. T Tide in Country. Okay, let's do we that. We are, first one. Boom. Okay, so we've got our Facebook page. All right, we got, we've got, all right, is that Savannah Magazine? Was that, were you featured in Savannah Magazine? Yes. Uh, South, Magazine. South Magazine. Oh, South Magazine. Okay, that's a credibility hit. The more we can get of those, the better. Okay, keep scrolling up. Um, South Magazine, LinkedIn is very optimized. Make sure you have all your information on LinkedIn because that's usually the top one. Grand opening. Okay, Savannah Chamber covered it. And they're very optimized because they have tons of people on their website, which means it's going to show up. Um, fabulous. Fabulous. Fa okay. We can also get some information in there about an award you are going to win because you're going to take the time to fill out the chamber award things. You got to research it. It's a lot of work. That's why a PR firm is, it's expensive because there's a lot of research involved. But um, you can do it yourself, absolutely. Anybody else want to volunteer to, for Jen to do a... Uh... Let's do the Savannah Tribune. Okay. Georgia's Best Weekly. You're in Wikipedia. That is so cool. That is really hard to get into. That's a goal for everybody. All right, and boy, they are optimized. Look, that's number two. All right, we've got your Facebook. You're a little different because you are media. You're mass media. Yeah. You are local, 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 wonderful mass media. So how about, um, 
let's, let's just look under images too, because you need to be optimizing your images with the, your brand. So it comes up, boom, they've done it. They, they, so instead of saying picture number one dot JPEG, it says Savannah Tribune. That's the only way that comes up. So you want to make sure you have all your pictures, all your content optimized. That, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Anybody else like to? to I'll volunteer. Uh, who is that? Bob. Bob, uh, what's the name of the company again? Uh, oh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. No, no um, Jen will do it for us. She's she's sitting there. What's oh, okay. The uh, actually, my wife is uh, is the, the brains of this outfit. So. Uh, are you seeing on my screen? No, we're no. What's the name of your company? Okay, your company. Go, go, okay. Google Lisa Earl E A R L E McLeod M C L E O D. There you go. Well, an E on the uh, Earl. Yeah. Did you mean Lisa Earl McLeod? Yes. Yep. Okay. Let's do that, and then let's go look at her. Um, is that her? Yeah. That's your Okay, so she's been okay. Yeah, and then this part here, we've got your home page. I would recommend changing home page to have your keyword there instead of home page because nobody searches the word home page. Just so speaking, Lisa okay. McLeod. Yeah. Okay, keep scrolling down here. Let's see what else we have here. I like to see some more articles here. Well, it's, it's interesting because she's a syndicated columnist and she's whoa, whoa, whoa. in a... There's Forbes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I take that back. <laughs> you see how instant that is, guys? You see how, I mean, Huffington, boom. All right, you get an A, stop. <laughs> she gets an A. <laughs> well, and it, look, it's really optimized over here too with her book showing up right there. Beautiful. Her profiles, so I mean, she, yeah, she's... Yeah, Selling with Noble Purposes one is coming out in the second edition. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That that is what a beautiful first looks like because when people hear about you, they are going to. So, um, good job, good job. So it's twelve thirty-six, and let let's go. Um, let what I will tell you about this. Make sure you have Google alerts for your name, and for your your the name of your company for your competition um, and for your unbranded words. So if um, that would be, you know, my unbranded words would be uh, PR, PR. I mean, it, it ends up with a massive search, but my branded words would be Marjorie Young or Carriage Trade. So when people get to know you, they are going to Google your brand. Um, if they, they hear about you, they're gonna Google you. So um, make sure your Google looks really good. And you do that by getting in the mass media. You do that by dripping out one press release every month in our size community. One press release. I mean, you can, the more content, the better, but I'm saying for mass media, what we have found in this size community is one, pre one press release in hopes that it gets picked up, okay? Um, Marjorie, we have a question from uh, Erlene Jones about how much does the age of the content matter, like the date? When is something old and not relevant? It's better to have new, but, is, but if you still have something good showing up, it's better than nothing. Um, another whole talk would be about if there's something negative and how to push it down. but. Um, yeah, that's, that's another whole strategy. This, today's talk is just about how to get good, positive stuff showing up on your, your Google. Um, what I will tell you is start putting um, headlines that have your name and your brand, optimizing it, getting it into the press, post it online. There's a free site that a lot of us publicists use called prlog.org. It is super optimized. You create an account. You, you cannot post pictures, and it can only be 400 words. 
but it helps with your digital reputation with um, online. So anyhow, so let, let's now start with the, the, okay, we're gonna talk about three things. This first one is the authority. All right, and this is part of the reputation matrix. Um, if you are the authority in what you're doing, you, there's so, uh, this is like my favorite way to market small businesses. You be the industry expert. You either write columns, you blog, YouTube, create your own channel. YouTube is so optimized. It's, I mean, um, talk, you know, get up there and either do a, um, five minute talk with tips using the brand words, your brand words in the, uh, in the uh, description area. So you come up or you go live, you create your own live show. There's a, there's a, there is a um, platform I was telling Jen before we came on called StreamYard and it is, it's fabulous. You can get on there and you can pull, you can create your own show. Like John, you could create a, a a platform where people go back and forth and talking about uh, insurance or, you know, your wealth management. I mean, pull in industry experts and, and go back and forth talking about that. Um, there's, it's just endless of what you can do, but you got to be brave enough to make a commitment in your plan to do this. And it, Google says that next year, it's, we're barely even going to see still photos. It's all going to be video, whether it's short or long and definitely live. So we've got to figure out a way to weave that into to your strategy. So the, the first one is positioning yourself as the authority and always be prepared to um, give your host a bio. And usually, like if you get, go to Rotary in, in pre-COVID times, Rotary is always looking for places to, for people to speak ed, on educational things. Um, and your, the Rotary would have a page that you give them and you read, they read it out and it's everything in there. It's the only time there can be any endorsement about your company. Because when you're giving a talk, no endorsement of anything. It needs to be 100% educational. Because the first time you do, just say, oh, yeah, we're having a sale, you know, at the end of next week. That's not what you guys are here. It, it needs, to, you need to be educating them. So, and it takes, it takes a while to figure out what angle it is that you, you'll be educating in. But once you do, you can do videos, you can do columns in the, in the mass media, you can do um, newsletters, you can have your own show. Positioning yourself as the authority is, um, it, it moves the needle. Um, create your own lecture series. I love lecture series. You can do all of that online. Victoria, do you have your own lecture series? Um, I, do a, I do a ton of teaching. I've given a TEDx talk. I've written in magazines. This is actually jarring a lot because I yeah. think my question is, do you, so for instance, I'm in two magazines that are circulating. Should I be just releasing press releases? The fact that I'm including articles? I hadn't even thought about that before. Um, all of the above. Yeah, do a lot of that kind of stuff. It's just interesting. Okay, thank you for mentioning. People leave, small businesses leave so much news on the table. They don't realize that media is looking for content. Um, and if it fits in with their, their readers, there's a good chance they'll use it. Maybe. You pay for advertising, you pray for PR because it does build the credibility. Okay, so that's number one. Position yourself as the authority. You use those, those same strategies that I talked about with the reputation matrix to talk about hard news, leadership, charity. You're gonna write a press release about it and that's another whole talk um, on how to do it. But in essence, it's who, what, where, when, why, and how, and then you send it to Tanya. <laughs> Are you, um, I mean, it's got to be newsworthy and you've got to write it in third party, in, in third person, like you're a reporter, okay? And it doesn't have to be a fancy press release like PR firms do. It literally is who, what, where, when, why, and how, and they can figure it out, okay? But one page, short, 
Short, short, short. Okay, the next, the next one is um, number two. And this perhaps is probably what I should have started with. And after working with so many small businesses over the past 25 years, when I talk to a small business owner, especially, well, and if I ask them what they do and they go on and on and on and on and on, that's a problem because it's not repeatable in the community. So I just wanna do a really quick thing. Let's see which ones stuck with people. So Elizabeth, what, is, what does Elizabeth do? D can anybody remember anybody's tagline here? Elizabeth is a teacher at uh, Georgia Southern University and is, is here to help learn new skills to teach her students, to pass on to her students. All right, can anybody remember anybody else's? I remember somebody from Wisconsin, was, was it um, Milwaukee? It was somebody from Milwaukee, I don't remember. And what do they do? I didn't remember. I missed most of the introduction. So I thought it was uh, something to do with staffing. So, um, but the, so I'm going to challenge each of you because this is, this is where it all starts. If you don't have a repeatable tagline that somebody can meet you at the, at the grocery store, when you say, what do you do? If it's not less than 10 words, they're not, it's going to come out a different way. You want, if you can get it to three or four words, Jen, you got something. Well, I have this challenge, right? I have like four different hats I wear in the community, right? And so it, it's really hard. People don't really re remember like which hat I'm wearing and, and it's very confusing. And a couple of you have the same issue. Like a couple of you went, I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this. The reality is people only really remember one. So when, when I'm talking to somebody, I have to try and figure out really fast which one is gonna resonate with them most. Smart. Right? So is it CETA, Savannah Economic Development Authority? Is it Creative Coast, right? Is it Logistics Tech Corridor, right? Is it the Bridge Fund, right? Is it Startup Chicks? You know. So it's just, so you kind of have to go like, what? Okay, try, I, like I'm always gonna ask somebody what they do first. This is my trick, I do this because I want to know what they do first because that way I can target my introduction of myself to them based on what they do. It, it's so smart. When, when I turned my dad's business around, um, it was during a really bad recession. And at the point, they, were, they did printing and publishing for everybody. But when we boiled it down, we were right outside of DC and Alexandria. When we boiled it down to three words, printers for associations, it told the associations that my dad was a specialty in that printing area and it, people could repeat it. So really work on that. That is, that's the beginning of everything. If 92% if of how you're gonna get new business is word of mouth, you have to have that repeatable tagline, okay? And it, it could take you six months to really get it down. And you can even do the old fashioned way of operator where you whisper to somebody and somebody else whispers it and whatever comes out is what they're gonna be saying in the community. Is that matching up with what you're doing? Okay, so that's number two. And number three, this is probably the, the most underutilized um, marketing free tool that most small businesses are not doing. And it's called a laser focused referral group. Think of it as BNI, whatever. This is four or five people that are sharing the same clientele. So let's say, for example, you're dealing with high-end homeowners. You want to form a group that meets once a week, I mean, excuse me, once a month or every other quarter or twice a year that deals with high-end homeowners. So maybe there is somebody who has audio video. Maybe there is somebody who does lighting. Maybe there is somebody who does interior decorating. If you form this group, this posse, and, and do it for referrals, 
when you're out in the community or on Zoom at this point in history, and somebody says, yeah, you know, I'm looking for, uh, you know, a lighting person, you will pipe up and say, oh, I, I have a referral for you. That's the word of mouth. That's a referral. And they're most likely going to get it because it is, it, it is a referral. It is free. You create your own. And it is, it, it, it moves the needle. All three of these move the needle. Um, and I'm sure you are already implementing at least the last one, the, the referral groups, but really foster that. I've been part of one for 25 years and it, it takes, it, it took a village to make sure I've gotten to 25 years in business because I've got these other, they happen to be, all be women um, looking out for me, but I'm also looking out for them. If I hear of somebody who needs something from, from that group, I refer them and guess what? Word of mouth is everything. So those are, those are the three takeaways. Um, and what I will tell you about word of mouth and getting PR and, and stuff in the paper, you still have to sell. Sorry, you still have to sell. When I was turning my dad's business around, I got this wonderful article in the paper but I still had to make those phone calls and, and sell my product. Um, it's not like they just you know, swoop down on you, you know, they do, they do, but it, you do have to continue to, to keep selling. But now you've got great material that's ended up in the press. You've got a great online reputation footprint and it's easier to sell. You can show up at, at a sales meeting with, with these articles. And um, it's like saying, hey, they're saying we're great here. So just really quickly, I know we're running out of time. If anybody could share with some of the things that they would like that they're gonna start doing, or if you have any questions, um, now's the time because we're down to 10 minutes. <laughs> Okay, Marjorie, I'll go. It's Brian. So um, I think a lot of small businesses underestimate the power of networking. You've got to get out there and network. And, it, and sometimes it's uncomfortable for people to walk into a room or go to a business after hours or a luncheon um, where they don't know anybody. Um, for the love of God, please make sure you have business cards. I can't tell you <laughs> how many events I've been to Salespeople will tell me, oh, I'm out of business cards. I mean, that to me is the worst thing you can do. But you have got to um, go to professional networking events. Um, you may not get a new client, but it keeps you, again, it's that branding, that top of mind marketing that you're doing. It doesn't cost you anything uh, but your time. A lot of the events are free. Sometimes there's a nominal charge, but it's well worth it because people want to say, who do I call if I want to place an ad in the Tribune? Well, I know to call Tanya because Tanya is freaking everywhere. Um, and so you really need to do that. You should be doing something at least once a month, if not more. It's a little different now because of COVID, but you've got to get out there. Yeah, you know, and I only covered three ways for word of mouth. So if anybody has any other tips that we can throw in that's what worked for you, let you do it because this is, we've got almost 40 people on the call that, I mean, we're here to help. I, I do think there's an element of timeliness. Like if you really want press and you do something that's really timely, like right now, I think, especially locally, people want good news, right? We're kind of burned out on the bad news. People want good news. So if you have a story, if you can position your company to tell a story about something that you're doing good for your customers or for the community, boom, you've got a good news story, right? Mm -hmm. And, and they're, you're probably gonna get covered because we are so sick of watching the bad news all day long that, that I think, if, you know, I've had a couple of companies that have done things literally, you know, like um, one very early stage startup for Breeze Medical put together a virtual reality training program for nursing students to make sure that they felt comfortable going into the hospitals because they were basically graduating early to go work on COVID, right? And so let's make sure that they understand pandemic protocol in 
a nursing school, like as they graduate from nursing school, go immediately to the front line, essentially, right? So they put together a VR program for that. And so that, you know, got them on Savannah Morning News and on WSAV and, and some other places. So I think timeliness is, is interesting. You know, we just did the press release in early June for CEDA about the relocation incentives. So I am paying $2,000 if you want to relocate to Savannah, Georgia, and you're a remote tech worker, right? And I've been on Inc. Magazine, Fast Company, uh, all the local channels, MSNBC, as Marjorie alluded to earlier. I've gotten 39 press hits in a month because of the timeliness of that, because people are saying what's going to happen if people don't go back to work. And I'm saying, great, I don't go back to work. Come here, work here, bring your job with you and let's create a tech community in Savannah, Georgia, right? So, but part of that was timeliness, right? We hit at the exact right time, yeah. right? I wrote, the, I wrote the incentive on March 23rd and we held it till mid-June release. You know, it's, it's like a safe shelter, it's a nonprofit. Uh, they have seen increase of uh, domestic violence up by 20, 30%. I mean, that is a national trend and that ends up in the paper locally. I mean, you've got to keep track of what's happening nationally. And if it's something in your business that's happening locally, it's more likely that the media will pick it up. Um, hard news is, is it's on that reputation matrix um, and you really can't tell when it's going to happen, something like that. But that should bump everything else because it's more likely it's going to get picked up. So, um, Philip, you said you have a question? Yes, just real quick. Um, um, the laser-focused uh, referral partnerships are uh, really uh, going to be a key part of my strategy. But mm -hmm. I think the struggle for some of us who are similar to my camp is that if you're already well-connected and well-known in the business community and you know all the people who have the similar interests as you and are similarly aligned in the clients that they serve or customers they serve, um, we're probably, those kind of people are probably well down the road of that program. So for, for those of us who are not already well connected and we're still trying to go about identifying the right kind of organizations and people who are similarly aligned, who would be good natural fits for that kind of a partnership, what is your recommendation for finding the, the great fits for creating a, a, a key partnership? Form it, even if you can't get the, the influencers, form it because everybody has networks. Form it and, and, and really use it, really use it. Keep it very exclusive. Um, it is, uh, it's powerful. I don't know what I would have done without mine. I would also say I think globally, not locally. You would say globally too? Well, now more than ever, I mean, we're all on Zoom. We're yeah. not together, right? And we're probably not going to be together for at least another six months. So, you know, what about finding a peer that's in Atlanta or Charleston or Jacksonville and, and trying to build a global network, right? We've got yeah. Melody and a couple other people that are e-commerce, Jessica and Melody that are focused on e-commerce. Well, they want to sell to their customers all over the globe. So why not think about global partnerships instead of just local partnerships? You know, and I've been so local, you know, we are Savannah. I've been so local for 25 years. I'm going to need to find people who have connections for when I launch my book, which is at the printers now. Um, and Jen, I want to talk to you about Inc. Magazine. I mean, seriously. And, and it's all these strategies. It's about my reputation matrix. But it, if you don't ask, you don't get. So, you know, speak up and connect. And I see Catherine... Gregory, she sold us our, her, my house back in Richmond Hill many years ago. Kathy, good to see you. Kathy, she is a real estate agent. I, whoa, we can't hear you. Oh gosh, we only have three. Hey, how are you? Hi, it's good to see you. I'm, I'm one of the oldie goldies. I've been in the business 43 years in real estate. I knocked on doors back in the 70s and was the only realtor in Richmond Hill for years. My social media stuff is a mess, though. So I am not good with social media. I've always done more hands-on. It's word of mouth. Mm -hmm. 
that's how we found you many many years ago when we bought the house in Richmond Hill. And I do, and I saw Tanya on there. I hadn't seen Tanya in ages either, and I know Brian. But um, look, for, it, this has been a great seminar. Um, I need help. <laughs> so. I handled all the cats advertising. Yeah. Hey, Tanya. Uh, and uh, I saw your signs out yesterday, actually. So. Hey. Yeah. So we've got two minutes. We've got two minutes. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I just want to seriously thank each of you for taking a full hour. This moves the needle. I have been seeing this for 25 years. It moves the needle. And uh, there's, there's a lot of other strategies, but please keep in mind word of mouth because word of mouth is gold. It's everything. It's everything. You don't have a good reputation. You know, it's going to show up online. It's going to show up on social media and it's going to show up in the community at coffee lines. No one. So anyhow, Jen, thank you so much for having me. This has been, thank you for thanks. asking. It's been great. Thanks. Um, I'm, a couple of you I'm going to reach out to and see if we can get you scheduled for some uh, lunchtime topics next month. Um, we have, this is really it for this week. We kind of slowed down for July. So we have a, we do have a lunchtime topic next week with ATDC, the Advanced Technology Development Center out of uh, uh, Georgia Tech's, the state's technology incubator. And we have a special happy hour next Wednesday night. So if you haven't already done so, go to the creativecoast.org and sign up for our newsletter so you can find out more about all the cool stuff we're doing. Oh, Laura, Laura, Lee, and Laura Lee, do you have a, Laura Lee, you there? A quick, a quick comment. Hey, Marjorie, thanks for everything. Thanks, Jen. Hey, Marjorie, where, where and when can we get your book? Um, could you take a minute and throw that out there? I know this is not self-promotion time, but it is <laughs> self-promotion time. Um, you've given us so much. Tell us how we can get the book. It's only going to be $11.95 uh, is what uh, it's going to be on Amazon. I have a website that's really bad called MarjorieYoung.com. Um, so can you just share a link or ask Jen to share us a link with us, all of us that are attending, so we can all make sure we get a copy? I wrote it and I made it as cheap. I wanted to give it away just as a, you know, something to give away to people because I, small business owners need to know this information. And Marjorie, of, you may not remember, but like eight years ago, you shared that reputation matrix at a NAWIC meeting. And to this day, we still talk about that matrix. We still have it. People in our group use it. So um, it's going to be well worth that, that whatever it costs. Yeah, well, there's plenty of free videos that I've done. Small business owners have to know how to do this. They have to. If you're going to move the needle with your visibility and credibility, you've got to have a plan. It's your reputation. Don't just start doing press releases. It's got to be planned out. And it's, a, it's only a 100-page book. It's mostly bullet points, but it, it will. I wrote it to help the small business. And I know how hard it is. I, uh, you know, I grew up with two entrepreneurial parents. We almost went under. I mean, it, it, it was really scary. So all the, these are all lessons learned that uh, I'm sharing because we're all in this together, guys. This is really um, interesting times. We all need to help each other and, and refer each other. And we're going to get through this, but we all need to be helping each other. So, so I will definitely get a link from... Marjorie about her book and I will share it uh, when it comes out on the Creative Coast website under hashtag good news. So check, keep an eye out for that. With that, I'm Thank going to stop recording. We do not have to stop the conversation, but I am stopping recording. Oh. <laughs> Thank you.